All right. Does that change between oil and gas? No, it changes on um, fluid coming in. That chart that Paul showed you, uh, it, it really just has to do with, with if anything's coming in or not. What, what kind of flow you I'm sorry? Why do you need to keep like 60 minutes opening for the second? For the, how? Your second flow is 60 minutes. Uh, no magic on that. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, the longer the better. Yeah, that's a matter of how long you feel comfortable leaving the tool in the hole. You really need a two, at least two to one shut in to flow period. Preferably two and a half, three to one shut in to flow. So if you're flowing it for an hour, leave it shut in for three on your final. Uh, that'll give it enough time to build up where hopefully I'll see any inflections in it. Uh, but yeah, you know, if you felt comfortable leaving it up for two hours and leaving it shut in for six, you get even better data. If you run it any shorter than that, you're not looking very far. I mean, a typical uh, oil test, you know, decent permeability is going to look maybe 50 feet into the reservoir is about it if you actually calculate your radius of investigation. Um, so, if you want to look any further than that, you're going to have to run it longer. That means like 30 is not enough? It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If, if all you're interested in is just a, you know initial reservoir pressure and a fluid sample, that's fine. But if you're actually trying to investigate, see if there's a barrier out there, look for potential depletion, that sort of thing, then you're better off. But if all you're interested in is a pressure and a fluid sample, yeah, you could do it for 30 minutes. Bill, is there, is there a way to just give a good guess? I mean, if, if you're trying, if all you want is PI? If all you're wanting is PI? And can, but can't you, if, if, with regards to you run a 3 minute open or a 30 minute open, and you get that first shut in, and it's, it's still increasing, you know, and it's had some removed from it, based on experience for type of these type of residents in Kansas anyway, can't you make it? Yes, what the, uh, I mean, where do you use the P of I for? Well, it, it depends. If it's an oil reservoir that um, you're not planning on doing any secondary recovery or any science on, then yeah, that's probably good enough. If, on the other hand, it's a gas reservoir and you're trying to determine what your reserves are, you've got to have that starting point because what's going to happen is you're going to probably underestimate your reservoir pressure with most, if with like a Horner plot, you're going to underestimate it. So let's say, for instance, that it's that you estimate it based on a DST to be a thousand psi as your initial reservoir pressure, okay? And then you put it on production, you produce it for six months, and you go in, you take a bottom hole pressure to see how much it's dropped, and you see, wow, you know, this thing's now 990 psi. So we produced it for six months, we've only lost 10 psi we've got a lot of reserves out here. Okay, Problem is, if you go back and actually measure that initial point, instead of a thousand that you just picked off of your plot, it probably extrapolates out to 1200. So now your real pressure is 1200 dropping to this 990 over the six months and you've grossly overestimated your reserves in place because you, you didn't know what that initial pressure was. Well, if you, if you haven't withdrawn any fluid from it and you perforate it and you drop a bomb down there and test it, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But there again, why bother with the initial flow period if you're not going to use that for, to, calc to, to measure your reservoir pressure? Why even run it? What, I, 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 that's one thing I've never heard is, is why, you do, why you do it. Tom? Bill, is three minutes really long enough to, to relieve your supercharge in Kansas? Yeah, I mean, especially if you've got a decent reservoir. I mean, unless you've got something like we were talking about earlier that's just sucked a ton of drilling mud. But, I mean, you, you think about it, how many barrels do you lose in a producing zone that's permeable? I mean, not much. Whatever your fluid loss is. Whatever your fluid loss is. So, you're just... Conception then one of the things I've always thought when you look at your at your 
you know, my standard test is a 1530, and then based on blows, go from there. Right. But when, when you always look at your initial shut-in, um, even in a really good permeable reservoir, it seems like it's always higher than your final shut-in, probably because I'm not leaving the tool shut-in long enough the second time around. I've always attributed that to supercharge. No, and no, no, I, I can tell you what it is. In most cases, there again, I, I can't even guess how many of these things I've analyzed. Most of it, especially in these carbonates, is just heterogeneity in the reservoir. You can see, if you analyze it on the derivative, that yeah, especially in 3D deals, I've noticed this, that you're drilling a high structure, you're drilling into the best permeability there. And as you move away from that well, the permeability decreases. And I'm sure some geologists can tell me the reason for that. But in, in most of those cases, if you look at the derivative on it, that derivative is taking an upwards inflection which tells you that it's continuing to build. And that if you extrapolate that on out, you're going to get back up to, to where you were. But, but I mean, if you just do a material balance on how much fluid you can lose into that formation versus how big the formation is, it's the, the pressure increase is you know three or four decimal places over. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And and what you're going to find out is your PI is going to be higher than you thought it was because you've never actually either let it build up on prior test or you've never been able to extrapolate it up to where it ought to be. And then three minutes is long enough to clean up your zone. To, to, it, it, to be perfectly honest, uh, three minutes is is probably too long because I've looked at a lot of tests, you know, that with three minute shut ins that it's still building. Yeah, but it's typically by the time I, I look at it you know, on the derivative, I can I can do a good extrapolation out to a good value for PI. But PI pressures in Kansas are a lot higher than most people think they are, just because they've never done a proper extrapolation on those or run the initial short enough that they actually measured it. You know, Paul would have to address that. I don't know if that's possible. That's basically what an RFT tool does. An yeah, RFT we, we've, had, we've had times where the tool will plug immediately. Yeah. Like, I mean, you'll see it fall off. Uh, and back I think we, Jack, you were, we just ran a pickle test. And, and just a, as soon as the tool opened, boom, it plugged. And that, that don't work. I mean, yeah. You've got to get it down to atmosphere for a, a, a little bit. You've got to. Because otherwise, that, wherever that thing stops at, you've got, you got, you got to pop it over for a certain sort of little bit. Shut it yeah. So if it blows on, the, <clears throat> blows on the bottom of the bucket in a minute, you need to shut it right then? Yeah, yeah. if you're getting a blow in a minute, I absolutely would. Yeah, you're, you're not serving any purpose after that. What if you get zero flow? Would you take it to the Well, on the, on the initial, that's not that unusual to get no blow. Uh, so, you know, I'd do the, you know, the one, two, three minutes. I wouldn't go any longer than three. Shut it in and then you get your, there again, all you're trying to do is determine what your reservoir pressure is. That's it. Your test is the second half. That's where you're getting the reservoir character. So how do you adjust your, your, your second open? Uh, we'll get to that. If, if, if you don't keep that initial open long enough, you just see your blow. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's all about break time and all that. If you keep it open for three minutes, you don't have any What's the what's the purpose of letting the blow build? Oh, well, just you know, as as soon as you lose, as, yeah, as soon as you lose your blow on the second, shut it in. Yeah, because you're not if, if if it's not blowing, there's nothing coming in. That fair, Paul? Yeah, call check with your geologist. Yeah, it, it should, that, that should be a moving target. Somebody should be supervising that.